Hello guys and welcome back to the winter preliminaries for Europe. I'm joined on the desk by D2 and Brian Kibler. How's it going guys? I'm doing really well. Got to cast with you yesterday. First time casting with Brian Kibler. Looking, really looking forward to that. And uh, we have some really good players today. I know a lot of people have been complaining about some of the players dropping down, but some excellent players for this match. We'll get to those guys' bio in a second. How are you doing, Brian? Uh, doing great. You know, we, we've already seen uh, some some really exciting games so far today. Uh, a lot throughout the weekend already, and uh, you know, it should be uh, it should be really cool to see which players will advance to the Europe Championships uh, coming next month. Yeah, this is a big moment for these players. You know, new players, up and coming players, having the opportunity to go to a championship, have a lot of prize money, a lot of prestige as well. So this is a big moment for a lot of these players' careers. But we have a new match coming up now. We have Pock. How do you pronounce this? I, I think it's Pokrovac. Po Pokrovac? Pokrovac? Yeah. I'm not very familiar with kind of Polish names. So Pokrovac versus Lakari. Now, Lakari played yesterday. It was the final game he played against Slash. Had an impressive 3 0 win. So, Pokrovac, D2, tell me a little bit about this guy. Well, we got some notes on, on, on this guy right here. He's 14 Hearthstone Championship Tour points. He did it by getting top 25 in January, and he won one of the Cups. So definitely accumulated a lot of points, got a pretty high seed for him there. He's been playing card games since he was six, and basically he found out about Hearthstone from other pros in those card games. And he's qualified for some big events, trying to make it as a professional player. His current lineup, he was helped with some pros on it. And Blackout, uh, you know, a guy that you know from, from the UK, he said he thinks that Prokrovac is going to make it. Brian Lakari, we watched him play yesterday. We both cast that game. What do we know about him? Yeah, uh, well, he, uh, well, we know from his interview, he's a very passionate player <laughs> with, uh, with, you know, a, a lot to say. And uh, he is a uh, a player who has, you know, t uh, earned a lot of points on the ladder. He's finished top 100 most seasons. Uh, this uh, this event he qualified for, he he placed 34th in the January season, and uh, he's actually Dr. Hippie's practice partner. Uh, we just saw Dr. Hippie uh, go through with his win in the last round, uh, so I imagine he's he's looking forward to potentially working with him again moving into the championship. Wow, that'd be awesome if those two's got go through like, together, you know, they practice together, they worked really hard, and for both of them to achieve that, that'd be a, a great success for both of them. Kind of a nice tale of two people who train together, making it to, like, the big time. Uh, Lakari, uh, from what I know about him, has a lot of other um, uh, passions, <laughs> like s like snowboarding, like Rubik's Cubes, he does, like, all sorts of stuff, so a very uh, multi-talented uh, guy, and it looks like this game is about to begin. And Pokrovac is actually on Isuba, one of her bigger European teams, kind of in that region. And Lakari again, we're seeing him there. We got the Warlock against the Warrior. Yeah, and Lakari, uh, we saw yesterday playing Control Warrior. We've seen a split between the Control and Patron style of Warrior decks in this event. Uh, we also know uh, from his his uh, his explanation of his ban strategy that he he tends to ban the opposing Warrior Warrior deck as well. Uh, so here he's going up against Prokrovac's, uh, it looks to be aggressive Warlock deck, which is generally a matchup that can uh, that can tend to favor the Control Warrior because it has so many powerful cards, particularly the Fiery Warlocks in the early turns. We see Lakari with two of those already. Yeah, Fiery Warlocks is such a good card to kind of shut down the early aggression. If you don't have Fiery Warlocks, I mean, obviously, that's why it has been here for a long time, but in the olden, olden days when you didn't have that, it was kind of sticky if you didn't have that Fiery Warlocks early on. Also, Brawl is something we're expecting to see here, so a lot of options for the Warrior to kind of deal with the, the Warlock, but sometimes things can get out of control if you don't have those early weapons. And actually, it goes ahead and tosses away a Fiery Warlocks, wants that perfect curve. Mm -hmm. I remember it was once called the Fiery Win Axe in some <laughs> matches because it just took out those minions, stopped the pressure from the opponent, uh, opposing aggro player. And uh, the one thing that I've noticed from what the games we've casted is the control warriors have been doing pretty well, where you would expect the patron warriors do a lot better, a, a very popular uh, deck in the current meta. What do you think this is? Why do you think these control warriors are doing good? It really depends on what they're playing against, obviously. You know, they have different matchups, different, different things they're good against. I mean, for a control warrior, it's actually doing better. It actually has a favorable matchup against the patient warriors. That makes a big difference as well. And I want to go over to your point. It's not that they used to call it Fire Win X, they still call it Fire Win X. <laughs> still an amazing card. And uh, yeah, here we see uh, Pokervok develop the Nerubian Egg rather than Knife Juggler or Dark Peddler on turn two. Specifically, I imagine, because he is respecting the power of Fiery War Axe, which would remove one of his significant threats. Ooh, and the Void oh, Terror. Right on time. That is, yeah, that is a, a nice draw here. And this is one of the ways 
the uh, the aggressive warlock deck can match up quite well against the control warrior. Now he has two minions in play, neither of which actually die to fiery war axe. So Lakari will be forced to use another resource like that slam, perhaps in his hand, uh, to deal with one of the minions on this board. Such a powerful play against the warrior. Like you said, the fiery war axe can only generally take out the minion with three health, and they need something else to go with it. Take something like a four health minion or a five health minion. But he won't have the mana to say use a bash and a slam at the same time. He's only going to have to choose one guy to get rid of, and it's going to be the void terror here. And that four four is going to sit there nice and healthy and kind of leverage the board. Yeah, and, and I like this choice. Uh, Lakari is leaving himself open to the possibility of drawing death spot, which can deal with a four health minion like an Arubian while could deal with the five health minion immediately uh, from the uh, the Void Terror. Yeah, absolutely. Lakari looking to find some sort of gain or health gun later on. And we see a Shredder off the top yeah. as well. Poker Poker back. The top of his deck has been quite nice <laughs> in here with the Void Very Terror into the Shredder. Pretty much perfect draws on turns two and three. Very generous, yeah. I want to go back to that Void Terror. I mean, it's a card that's very risky to put in your deck, but when it can Go, go off like that, it looks really, really good. Sometimes it's a dead card in your hand, though, because you don't want to eat anything sometimes. Void Terror is one of the cards that I think gives the Zudex uh, the, the greatest strength against weapon-based classes mm -hmm. because it does... Uh, you know, build itself to the the health that it can survive. Things like Death Spite, things like True Silver Champion, uh, and it, it is a, a, a very powerful uh, way to sort of get out of range of those effects. And Pock Ravak is like swarming the board here, but we do see a brawl sitting in Lakari's hand, which is gonna get a lot of value, but. The thing with Zulok is once you brawl the one board, they generally just fill it back up again, <laughs> and then you're back in the same yeah. situation. And Pokervok definitely respecting the right. possibility of that brawl. He chooses not to play his Abusive Sergeant to push for two additional damage and develop another minion. Uh, instead, keeping it Actually, in his three hand. additional damage, if you think about it. Uh, yeah, with the, with the Juggler as well. That would be, would be an additional additional point of damage there, too. Uh, so it does, it does leave him with... Uh, it, it also... Not only leaves that resource in his hand, but is is it that would be the smallest minion that would be on the board, so it would potentially leave a worse possible uh, outcome of the brawl as well. And this is what separates the really good aggressive players from you know some of the you know the some the pl aggressive players who just play everything out from their hand and just you know go with the flow, right? Uh, Pro Grab, great restraint. Not putting that abusive sergeant on the board and getting paid off for it right now because he gets a fight next turn. You have Ooh, worst one survives. You have to kind of know when to go all in as an aggressive player. Against Warrior, you can't because of Brawl. Against Druid, you kind of can because they only have kind of like not very great removal compared to something like a Brawl. But the one card that stands out to me is Revenge. That might actually get some leverage. A revenge, yeah, we, we we see Lakari actually already down to 15 life. Yeah, if this Avenger Vargas comes down, he could actually fall down to that 12 and be a perfect revenge, but looks like Porkovex not going to go for that quite yet. Maybe he's playing around it. It, it could be, yeah, he could be respecting the possibility of revenge here. He sets Lakari to exactly 13 and plays an Imp Gang boss. I like it. And the Imp Gang boss is one of the minions that will survive a revenge. And then if he doesn't deal with the uh, Imp as well, that's a nice Argus target. So things are looking pretty good for him and right it, now. It's also worth noting that the Goldshire Footman here, while, you know, not really a card that has uh, has a big impact in most constructed situations, this actually can protect his Imp Gang boss from some sort of attack, which would then uh, allow it to be cleared off the board with revenge. Instead, if Lakari does end up having to revenge next turn, he has to do it uh, while this. actually generating additional imps for poker back. Right, and it's kind of acting like a little bit of a Noia Tron, right? Just getting in the way. He's ready for action, just getting in the way of any sort of. He's you know, half crazy the thing. cost of a Noia Tron. So you get about <laughs> half the effect of a Noia Tron. Doesn't get that divine shield. <laughs> you only get one, one, two out of the deal. And so. he isn't as annoying, let's be honest. <laughs> half <laughs> half just as annoying, annoying, yes. <laughs> All right, well, this is a kind of a crazy game because both players actually have so many options to them. I mean, Lakari has so he has so much health gain, but at the same time, he's, you know, being tempoed out by the Zoo. At the same time, Zoo needs to find a perfect balance between committing too much and getting enough damage to face and also clearing his opponent's board. So this is a really crazy game so far. Well, we do see uh, Lakari get down to exactly 12, which is the perfect setup for that revenge. Unfortunately for Lakari, uh, that is a dangerous position against that Imp Gang boss because it will, the Imp Gang boss uh, with the Defender of Argus will survive with uh, with several health and generating an Imp. Uh, and we see that Doomguard and uh, Power Overwhelming in Pokerbox's hand, which threatens a lot more damage to follow up. If right. he leaves anything on the board, uh, it could be devastating for him. Maybe even a loss, depending on what else uh, Pokerbox draws. 
It's a, it's a tough situation for Lakari. He's kind of been, even though he had that fiery war axe, which we said was very important, uh, he's still been fighting from behind ever since kind of the first few turns. Yeah, Pokervac had he had an excellent curve that respected the war axe. He he was able to develop uh, minions that were able to survive the three damage with the Nerubian egg into the the Nerubian plus Void Terror, and then followed that up with the the Shredder. So he has, despite Lakari having an excellent opening, he hasn't really been able to catch up this entire game. Right, and if you're Lakari, do you commit this execute here? Looks like he's going to go for it. I mean, as Lakari, you can kind of make the read that there's some sort of Doomguard in your opponent's hand because he hasn't played that card for a while. But at the same time, it's really risky to not get rid of that Inking Boss because you could just die the next turn. It could be any kind of Doom Guard, like an actual Doom Guard or even a fearsome Doom Guard. Oh my goodness, <laughs> those are indeed fearsome. <laughs> Not so gonna They're get a little, le little less of, a, of an immediate threat, though. And this, uh, this five-seven charge will uh, take a chunk out of Lakari's armor. And once again, he's on the aggressive. Lakari's gonna have to find more answers. It's kind of how Control Warrior plays anyway, very reactive at this point yeah. until they can stabilize and drop the big hitters. But we are getting to the stage of the game where those big hitters are coming down, though. The, uh, the uh, Justicar Trueheart here is going to give Lakari a bit of armor padding and continue increasing that padding each turn while we see Alex Straza, Death Spites, and Grom. It's just a matter of whether he has time to actually use all of these threats. Actually, hitting two right here wasn't actually too bad. I was wondering if Pokerback would have actually busted open his Haunted Creeper first, maybe, but I ended up work working kind of out for him. Are we going to see double Death Spike here? Looks like it's going to be Shield Block first. Wow, that is a great pickup. And he's going to be healing for more. He's going to be healing for more, getting more armor than Pokerback can deal damage to him. Yeah, the, the uh, tank up allows the warrior to really ig ignore almost a lot of the threats that the, the Warlock is able to generate. And we've seen... Oh, oh wow. wow. That is one of the threats that's hard to ignore. Doomguard comes off the top oh, of Poker Bot, uh, drastically increasing this clock. Uh, though still, I mean, we, we see Lakari, despite that Doomguard, still surviving at a relatively healthy total. And he does have uh, a nice top up with Alex Straza when he needs it. Uh, and that armor up, is, uh, like you said, is going to nullify a lot of damage. But Despite is going to need to come down. Maybe yeah, even double drop Despite, the other yeah. one. Yeah, just double Despite here and tank armor. up. You're not. I mean, if you tank up here, you're you only take taking one damage. One damage. Yeah. yeah. So I, I like this very defensive play by Lakari. All he needs to do is stay alive. He has such big threats in hand right now. He just needs to stay alive, and he'll probably win this game. And this play from Lakari is one that you don't see that often. That you can actually play a Despite then play an additional weapon over that death spite because your first death spite goes away uh, the death rattle does trigger and deals the the, free, the one damage to everything on the board this has got to be frustrating for Lakari. he keeps getting rid of his opponent's board and it keeps getting more and more annoying I we're gonna see the defender of, Ar of Argus come up and actually going to be protecting his flame and I like this from Prokovac gets uh, less damage on the board, but this is pretty annoying to deal with. He's trying to force the weapon on the Doom Guard rather than the Flame Imp, and I like the protection there. Bash is a good card to deal with the Flame Imp now, but then again, can you leave the Doom Guard up and can you hit? Can you tank it at this point with the weapon? It's uh, his health is slowly becoming uh, a resource he can't use. Yeah, right, so, so he has to use the bash, I believe, and then is he dead on the backswing? He goes on the two, then adds a uh, seven to his health total, which brings him up to nine. There's five on board. There's power overwhelming. I don't think that Lakari can win here or survive. Uh, there's I mean. currently yeah. There's nine. There's nine, ten, eleven. Yeah. Even Alex Straza puts him to fifteen, and with power overwhelming, there's exactly fifteen that Poker Vet can deal. Uh, he could bash armor up, similarly gain a reasonable amount of uh, of life. But yeah, it looks like. Yeah, Ooh, he's gonna go ahead and attack and bash. Yeah, exactly. And then armor that's, up right. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was mentioning before. And he's gonna go with the bash here, but that's exactly enough damage Still. with the power of overwhelming. And somehow Pokerback has gotten this game. I mean, feels so bad to have Alex Jaws, Doctor Boom, and Gromish stuck in your hand, yeah, but that's got, how it goes sometimes. And that's 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 the the way that a deck like uh, Aggressive Warlock does beat a deck like Control Warrior. It keeps you from getting to the point in the game where you're able to actually leverage all of those very powerful cards. You may have, you know, three legendaries in your hand, but you don't have enough time to actually play them. So I think that was just an amazing game, though. I mean, again, we're talking about how all these pro players, these great players, I mean, they were amazing plays yesterday by the pro players, and they fell down to the lower bracket or even out of the tournament. But still, we're seeing amazing play by these players who have grinded their way to this point.
I kind of feel for the carry there. He tried so hard to get back <laughs> in that game. He had answer after answer after answer, and uh, Poker Rap was just like, I'll just play something else. I'll just keep playing something too else. Too many questions, yeah. <laughs> just yeah. Like, too I many got questions. more questions, you have answers. <laughs> and, and Poker Rap, he really had the right kind of threats at the right time, right. too. As we said early in the game, he was able to play things that were able to survive the Fiery War Axe that Lakari had. And then the Doom Guard into Doom Guard was just so much threat so fast, and uh, Lakari just didn't have the time to deal with them. Well, when you're playing a zoo deck, you obviously have so many different kind of threats that you can put out on the board, but the way he played it, the timing of which he played it, holding back at certain points, playing more annoying minions at certain points, getting the damage when he needed to, I think it was immaculate played by both players, honestly. The Doom Guards coming kind of so close to each other was really bad as well. He just didn't have... Seven health is annoying to deal with for Warrior if you don't have that armor to shield slam, if you don't have the executes at hand, but he just kept having pressure done on... Uh, on his health, so he never really had a good opportunity to generate enough armor. Uh, he did get like the tank up, uh, hero power, but that just wasn't enough. Like, yeah, it was it was kind of forced, right? You couldn't really play Grom. It didn't really do anything. There's nothing really he could have done that turn. So he's like, well, I guess I'm getting my tank up now. And I do think that that the uh, the play that uh, Pokerbuck made toward the end, where he used his uh, Defender Vargas to only pump his Doom Guard, which prevented uh, Lakari from from getting any productive attacks on the Imp. That actually was 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 a very heads up play. A lot of players. Will, you know, they have two minions, like, all right, I'll, I'll pu pump both of them with my Defender of Argus. It's sort of the natural thing you want to do, get maximum value there. I think he would have lived, actually, if, if, yeah, the, if yeah. because he could have killed one of them, Attacked he could have one of them the and, Alex, or, and then Alex Stratus himself yeah, as well. Yeah, too, yeah. So he, he, was, he prevented Lakari from being able to productively use his weapon and not just keep himself in lethal range. You know, it, it was very good. And a calculated risk, too, because he saw one execute earlier, and he's saying, you probably don't have execute, mm -hmm. you probably would have used it already, unless it's off the top. I'm going to take that risk. It's a very... Sl small chance of that happening. Just, again, just a great play by the Pulse players. I can't emphasize this enough. I mean, Pokervac's uh, zoo play overall was just amazing. Like you said, he did that uh, taunt up, only taunting up the Doomguard, but also being very conservative around the brawl. But we're going into game number two now. Pokerfax so close to becoming a qualifier here, and he's going to be playing Rogue versus this, Warrior. This is tough. Yeah, this is a tough matchup. The the Rogue deck, uh, a lot of its strengths are in its ability to use cards like Backstab, cards like Fan of Knives, uh, and its hero power to, to deal with early minions, and then finish the game with burst damage with Tinker, Sharpsword Oil, and Blade Flurry. None of those really matter against Control Warrior. <laughs> right, Warrior, they don't play early minions. They, they Press the armor up button. Yeah, you know? Control Warrior. <laughs> this is this is one of the, the the most difficult matchups for a rogue to win, uh, just simply due to the fact that the warrior is able to generate so much additional effective health with the armor, and so many of the rogue's best tempo tools are just irrelevant because it's playing against a deck that's not looking to play an early game. One yeah. thing to note as well is it's very hard for a rogue to keep a minion on the board mm -hmm. against warrior, and they need that minion to activate the tank to start squeezing in damage. But warrior, like you said, has a lot of health health, and they can usually just deal with the minions yeah, as they come yes, down, and then Rogue just runs out of damage. Right. It, I feel like this matchup is very similar to the Grim Patron Warrior versus Control Warrior matchup, where it's kind of a lot of finger crossing, right? <laughs> for the for the Rogue, they're kind of like, okay, I'll try to make this tempo play, and hopefully there's an answer from the Warrior, and if they don't, maybe I can make some and, and, and this Violet Teacher is much like the Grim Patron out of the Grim exactly, Patron deck, yeah. in that it is, you are trying to generate a significant number of threats with a single card, and hoping that the Warrior doesn't have the ability to deal with it immediately. Lakari is able to clear off this first violent teacher, so Pokervok really sort of putting putting his his hopes on the next one to come down the following turn. I mean, perhaps the next violent teacher might not get dealt with straight away, so that might be an opportunity for him to generate the board. He just used the slam. Uh, he won't be able to death spite will uh, revenge unless he plays the coin now, which is looks oh. like he's doing. It looks like he might be. Might be actually considering coin shield block. Yeah, this is that's the only the only card in your hand that you coin out next turn. Exactly. I think I would like to see an armorsmith here. I feel like going for the armor up is a bit defensive. I, I mean, it will help in the end to have that extra armor, but I feel like having an extra minion on the board will help with those kind of trades. Well, if he. If if he had played the Armorsmith the last turn, he would be able to just use Death Spite along with an attack from the Armorsmith to clear off the, the Violet right. Teacher before it would be able to actually generate any students. Uh, instead, Lakari just sending his, his huh. face into the Violet Teacher alone. I yeah. guess he knows that the Whirlwind Effect will clear the Violet Teacher. Any mm -hmm. tokens that are generated, the tokens themselves won't be able to do any damage because uh, they can't attack. So he does have a way to deal with that. And if he drops Van Cleef now, he can just clear the Van Cleef. So do you backstab your own apprentice just to make a 6-6? Yeah, it's that's pretty good. Totally reasonable. <laughs> 
because obviously the 4-4, you're basically asking for your board to be clear. Looks like it's just going to be a slow play from Poker Pack. Going to wait on that bank cleave. Obviously, could make it pretty huge later. Maybe, uh, you know, just risk a big game hunter in the future just to try to finish out the game. But uh, for now, just going to be, you know, holding back, not playing anything. And what are we going to see from Lakara here? Could just be a coin Baron Geddon, actually. Baron would be really nice. Clears at the board, puts a 7-5 threat down, and he keeps his death spike for anything else that crops up. So, you know, this is a situation Control Warrior is usually in. I have all these answers, and then I start dropping the big stuff, and you have to sap and start uh, trying to deal with my uh, things at this turn. It could be a read also by Lakari that Pokrovac has been waiting to sprint because we've seen a couple of slow turns. Obviously, he had those Violet Teachers, but maybe he was thinking that Pokrovac wants to sprint right here, and this will prevent that. Yeah, the, the turn seven for the Rogue is, is often that turn where they're looking to reload their hand. Uh, though Pokrovac, he, he still has a, a lot of resources in his hand, uh, so it's not necessarily... Oh, it looks like he's actually just going for the... Backstab, sap, He's just trying to set up cleave. a big bank cleave. <laughs> yeah. The mega cleave. Uh, eviscerate the face. <laughs> you know, <laughs> no no fear of big game hunter, right? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so 6-6 six, six coming down. This can get cleared on board by the uh, Baron Geddon, but it is pretty scary for Lakari to do that because you could be facing a lot of damage in the backswing. So we do see if there is the Baron Geddon that comes out, I believe that Lakari would die. Uh, it would be four, eight, yeah, it would be exactly lethal for Prokovac. So if Lakari goes for the very greedy play of clearing off this Van Cleef with the Baron Geddon, he is dead. Yeah, and I mean, that is, we, we see Lakari's hand full of, again, those expensive legendary cards. And uh, uh, Prokovac is, is just trying to put pressure on him where he can. It, he, he recognizes that this is perhaps the window before Lakari is able to take over the game with the expensive legendaries and wants to get his, uh, his Van Cleef out here to try and. Uh, perhaps close that window before Lakari is able to, to leverage his more powerful cards. Well, Lakari does have a way to clear this and gain health. Uh, he can use the bash and use the weapon and shield block and armor up. So he can put himself in a kind of healthy situation if he chooses. I kind of like this play. Going for this, putting the Acolyte on the board, you do gain health as well, and you get to use your revenge after it. Unfortunately, he gets low enough that revenge actually kills his own minions, which is a bit unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, a awkward. Maybe the ordering was a bit off there. But gonna have to. Oh, it's gonna use the execute that he just got off the top here. So, 14 health. Lakari is at. If there's damage picked up from Pokeback, he actually has lethal here. I think that's it. That's is it. it. Yeah, I, I believe deadly plus prep uh, tinkers eviscerate is gonna be enough. He has to eviscerate first though. I believe. Every, if he doesn't eviscerate first, I think that Lakari gets enough armor. Oh, sure. Yeah, 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 and yeah. He is doing the <laughs> right order. Good sequence here from Pokerback. You see the fist pub, and Pokerback pulls off the upset and takes out Lakari in this matchup that we said was yeah, so unfavored. This, this is really remarkable, and uh, we see Pokerback with just the tools he needed. That that deadly poison uh, coming up the top of his deck actually dealt a ton of damage here and uh, closes it out in, yeah, what we said was, was a very difficult matchup. Now, one thing Lakari told us yesterday in the interview, he says he's a very confident control warrior player, invests a lot of time into that deck on ladder, and now he just lost a good matchup. That must be really tough for him. Not just, not just one good matchup, but two games in a row with the same deck. Right. And uh, you know, both of those are matchups where you go into as a control warrior player and you're feeling pretty good. You know, it's not like you're playing against, say, mid range druid or or you know, s s uh, like a handlock deck. Those are those are tough matchups for control warrior. You know, maybe he was talking about yesterday in his interview that he was beating all these druids. Maybe he over prepared for the unfavorable matchups and the favored ones. He just forgot how to win, perhaps. <laughs> I mean, there, I, I don't know. I think that he, he did perhaps uh, miss some opportunities to uh, to preserve his, his health total. We talked mm -hmm. about the Armorsmith right. window, where if he had played the Armorsmith, he actually would have taken three less damage from the Violet Teacher exactly. and would have gained some armor from Armorsmith. So he would have had a little bit more time there that may have turned around the way that that game did, uh, did go. And he did leave up the Violet Teacher for one turn. Mm -hmm. So uh, instead of having the Armorsmith, like you said, to deal with that minion immediately and not let it get any more damage, Damage. Like I said, he didn't have that. And, you know, uh, Pokrovac had the opportunity to seize that moment and squeeze in that extra damage. And I think he, I mean, he was two over. It was only two. So maybe that might have been just enough or maybe a few other decisions to keep him in the game. Yeah, he was absolutely out of resources. He used every last card in his hand to win that <laughs> <Just> game. Hand dump. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. If, if, uh, if uh, Pokrovac had been able to stay alive, I feel like he would have just won that game there. I mean, that, that's really the way that that matchup goes. The Warrior deck has inevitability because uh, its hero power and the cards in it typically match up so well against what the Rogue is trying to do uh, that 
you know, you need you want to try and extend the game as much as possible. And Pokervac found that window and is just able to close it out. All right, guys, this could be the final game for Pokervac if he finds this win. Lakari needs to get a win on the board here. Needs to get some momentum going. And he going. switched things up. He decided wow. to go with his uh, his warlock deck here. He's like, I'm I'm fed up with this warrior. Let's let's try and get a win with someone else. And that's a good strategy. Sometimes you can be stubborn and just keep playing that deck. But sometimes you just need a little shake up, kind of compose yourself and get yourself back in the game. It also depends on sort of what you uh, what you feel like your your strategy is oh. here, kind of mentally. Huh. Um, and in many cases, you know, players uh, when they come into into a game here, they they don't want to you know just get three out. You know, they, they they may feel like he may feel like okay, well, this is my best matchup that I have left against this particular mm -hmm. deck. So this is what I want to play to, to try and you know just kind of get my mental state back for few, not only the rest of this match but also future matches as well. Yeah, he's clearly struggling with that control war. He wants to kind of shake things up a bit. I kind of like the <laughs> the tempo. Uh, noble sacrifice there from poker fact yeah. realized that without doing so I mean his one ones are really susceptible to that white walker So, you know sacrifices that noble sacrifice and then from there is able to what it's there for yeah, exactly <laughs> it's, <sacrificed. laughs> yeah, it's in the name poker has been shown some really smart plays uh, throughout his games have been very impressive him so far now He has this overwhelming board of dudes we're going to be able to contest some of these one ones, but the uh, Imgram boss does get some value as he keeps uh, clearing them and generating one ones of his own. I kind of like. I wanted to see that card, dude. Overwhelming. Dude, overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, juggler here for Lakari is very strong against right. this board. It is uh, almost guaranteed to take down some of these uh, some of these recruits. <laughs> Nerubian egg, and then I imagine we'll see the Imp Gang boss also attack into recruit. Develop an imp. You kill off a recruit, get another knife juggle, maybe kill off another recruit. Yeah, and, and the egg here is actually also quite oh. strong because it represents uh, protection against the consecration we see of Poker Rock. Right. Uh, yep. Now, if, if Poker Rock were to cast consecration, Lucario would actually end up with, with the same amount of, of power on the board. The juggler and the imp would die, but he'd get another imp and he'd get a 4-4. <laughs> The egg, is great insurance, right? <laughs> the egg is brilliant insurance against stuff like Consecration. And now things look a bit awkward. He just has to Argus a 1-1 because he can't Consecrate yet because of the egg. Well, to be fair, in Lakari's hand, it's not looking too great either unless he picks up something. He picks up a Flame, which is okay. I wonder if he just go for the Doom Guard. Yeah, he's just going to play it out. Everything else, if you start tapping, you take too long. Tempo is the name of the game in this yeah, matchup, absolutely. so I do like his play. Keeps the board nice and clear. I like that, you know, just keep that board empty so when challenger comes down he doesn't get all the secret interaction uh, that you want when you're playing this deck but now lakari he's, he's out of cards and pokerback has a, a, a hand that is not only full but full of really powerful stuff absolutely and can't play that implosion right now because of that low thib and lakari i mean yeah he's getting a bit of a board here has a bit of a board lead but mysterious challenger coming down followed by boom i mean who do you favor here i feel like pokerback's still in the lead cut just looking at their their hand state and their board state it is it's definitely a game that, that I feel like... Uh, Only two secrets, though. Yeah, oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. So that, that would suggest that he does not play... Repentance. Perhaps he does not play Repentance or Redemption, or maybe he actually only has one Noble Sacrifice? Competitive Spirit isn't maybe another uh, card he's cut? Well, we, we, we've, we, always, we we've, always, yeah. we've only seen one Noble Sacrifice, and he, he has Avenge in his hand. Maybe he has one Avenge, maybe he has one Sacrifice. Yeah, maybe it's just four Secrets total, uh, two Avenges, and a Noble Sacrifice, and a Redemption. Because we do see the, the Sludge Belcher in his hand, which is right. kind of an unusual card, uh, particularly won. alongside the Lothab. We already saw him play the previous turn. So it's entirely possible that he's playing a secret light version of Secret Paladin, right. uh, in which the Mysterious Challengers are actually uh, a little bit weaker of a play. So yeah, he actually apparently does not have a second Noble wow, Sacrifice. Competitive spirit. Just Competitive Spirit going off I here. I am baffled Ooh. about this list that Pokervok has has brought here. He has a competitive, maybe just, maybe he's playing the four Secret Paladin. I think it's a uh, event. Redemption, just one of each. Avenge, Redemption, Noble Sacrifice, and the Competitive Spirit. I haven't seen this deck in a long time. It used to be something that people played, but it was mostly on the ladder because it kind of threw people off guard. In tournaments, once they figure out what you're playing, then it gets a bit difficult. But if Pokerback can qualify, no one's going to see his deck after this, so who cares? <laughs> the one thing to consider as well as Secret Paladin is they are prone to just drawing like a bunch of secrets at the start and never able oh, to get any uh, tempo. What, the two-point implosion, that is not what Lakari wanted to see there. He's going to have to throw one of his minions into this Sludge Belcher. Hmm, what do you use here? Do you use the Defender of Argus? 
I it's... think, yeah, I think you do, just because your imp game boss is so annoying right now. You don't really want to throw that away, and well, you the... still have enough room on the board if there's a consecration. Yeah, the imp game boss also gets the opportunity to attack into the the one two slum, slime and give you an additional uh, additional minion. And the, the, Ooh, the does it go the in the slime? Up... No, it doesn't no. go in the slime. Yeah, the, the taunted up egg here is actually very important because it is protecting you. Uh, against oh, there's a redemption, oh. by the way. Yeah, so that's why he Did played he? it. That's why he played okay. the Sludge Belcher instead of the Dr. Boom the prior turn. Did we, did we miss a secret or something like that? I feel like... It looked like there was only two, Dan. No, yeah, there, yeah, okay. But but then no, he, but then he played, played the event from, from hand. Right, right. okay. Oh, yeah, okay, so it, right. it does look like it's, it's, it's very likely one copy of each. Uh, and now that, that second egg, it, it continues to make that consecration that Pokervac has had since his opening hand a little bit awkward. Right, so there's actually a kind of a weird situation here with that abusive sergeant, not something you always see in the secret mm. paladin. A bit of a little bit of tech here. So he could use that, could use the keeper of Oldamon. What is the sequence here? Gonna go with the consecration first and just kinda get some damage onto this Nerubian. Pop the other egg. It still does a decent job clearing this board. Kind of a weird situation though. Yes, it's not looking bad for Pokrovac. You know, he had a slow start, but now he's got all the power plays coming up. And although there's a Doom Guard in Lakari's hand, uh, it's not going to be hard to deal with a 10 7 on the board. So, and a 7 7 coming up. So things are actually looking really good for him. Right, can take out this M. He's probably going to go face with this. Actually, he it's, could just take out the 4 It's a two-turn four. clock. You, you're you're right, attacking right, right. to the face here. I think. <laughs> yeah, I, that's true. But it, the thing about Zulok, though, is they really rely on being able to buff the minions on field. True. So that, yeah. that is something, that's a consideration. Something, something like a power of, If he was a little bit lower and he was potentially dead to power overwhelming Doom Guard, I think that he may have made that clear. Right. But in this instance, he, his, his opponent in a position where he has to do something. He has to throw the Doom Guard. His yeah, he has to throw the Doom Guard. Not even just the Doom Guard. He has to throw the Doom Guard and the right. Nerubian into it. Exactly. Exactly. So it's probably going to be Knife Juggler into Doom Guard, throw both into Mysterious Challenger, and he's going to be facing a boom and no real way to and kill Pokerback. He's just, he's just going to have a Knife Juggler left. He's going to have nothing exactly, in hand. Exactly. He's going to discard everything. Against a free fall and a yeah. weapon. Dr. Boom coming up, abusive in hand. Lots of stuff going on there, which uh, can get Pokerback the win. And this is a, a bleak moment wow. for Lakari throwing these two minions into. And it hits, oh. it hits oh. And this is just so, well. so many of his resources. Two damage off lethal right here. Does and, he pick it up? There nope. is Dr. Boom. And here, yeah, we see Lakari. Well, he now knows he can clear. this is over, oh, and there wow. it is. That's the concession. Pokervac will be moving through to the top eight into the Europe Championship next month. Very well played by him. 3-0, that's pretty dominating. Unfortunately for Lakari, I mean, he played so well yesterday. He had that kind of iconic, you know, interview, but he still has a chance, I believe. He, that he was does. the winner's bracket. Yes, he gets, he's going to go down. He's going to have another chance to make it. Hopefully, we can see good play out of him in the future, but uh, Pokervac, I'm super impressed by yeah, him. He, he played quite well. I, I was very impressed by his decision making. Uh, originally in the zoo matchup, I, lo I loved his play there. And even the Secret Paladin matchup, the specifics of exactly how he sequenced his cards, uh, being very conservative with his consecration, and eventually getting the, the maximum value out of it and punishing the opponent where he could with tempo. Excellent play. He timed his moments perfectly. He got a 3-0 win as well. So a very convincing victory. And he will be going into the top eight winters championship. This is a massive moment for him and his team in Uisuba. I've seen these guys around a lot, kind of in like community tournaments. So no, big congratulations to him. But like you say, the Lakari's not out yet. He still has an opportunity to qualify with his training part uh, partner, uh, Dr. Hippie. So still an opportunity for him. Yeah, I mean, as as we've we've said, you know, while there may be a, a number of players who uh, were fan favorites and in, uh, going into this event who, who have not made it, uh, we we have seen players like Pokervac who are, are well known in the community. You said that uh, you know Blackout was saying that he felt like Pokervac was someone who's going to go through, and this is a chance for players like him to shine, and he did just that. Yeah, and we, we, I mean, I want to reiterate at this point one more time. I mean, we've seen all these players kind of drop down, but at the same time, we're still seeing excellent play. Even though that was a 3-0, I think both players played pretty well. A few misplays here, a few missteps, I would say, from Lakari, but overall, I think he deserved, he showed what this play deserved to be here, and uh, Pokervac definitely showed that he deserved to be in that top eight. Although Lakari did have a very convincing win at the end of yesterday, he went 3-0, so he definitely shows he has the stuff, you know, to get those good wins and uh, qualify, so I think Lakari still has a very good opportunity to go through into the top eight, but he will be fighting some of the killers in lower bracket. We have some <laughs> really scary players down there, so he does have his work cut out for him. Yeah, absolutely. So many good players in the lower half of the bracket. Some of them still alive and can still make it to there. But now that Lakari has fallen down there, like you said, he's going to have to go through those players just to make it through. Yeah, 
we're, we're, we're definitely shaping up to have a, a strong uh, a strong lineup at the European Championship, and we, we have uh, quite a few more matches coming today uh, where we will get a chance to see who else will be joining them in, uh, in that event. All right, guys, we're going to go with Frodan now. He's going to give us some information on that win. So uh, over to Dan. Thank you very much, Nick and crew. Very short and sweet. To the point, 3-0 is how I like it if you want to make a convincing win. Plus, it's a very good case for having these players really showing that they belong here in the winner's bracket. So yet we have another player that's joined us uh, with the Winter Championships next month on March 18th to 20th. Let's go ahead and check in with our winner of the series, Pakravach, to find out more about him as well as maybe how to pronounce his username. Can you hear, can you hear me, Pak? Yeah, I can hear you. Awesome. Frozen. So the first thing of my question is, we've been trying to pronounce your name correctly, uh, probably be... incorrectly the entire time. Can you tell us and introduce more about yourself as well? It could be Pokrovac, Pokrovac. I don't care much. I <laughs> want it like Pokrovac, but it's fine to Pokrovac as well. Awesome. Can you tell uh, us a little bit about your background in Hearthstone and how you got started? Okay, I started playing card games when I was six years old already with Magic the Gathering. Uh, my father teach me really awesome. a lot about card games and uh, I started playing Hearthstone when I was 14. I heard about it from some Magic players. I try it and try to be good at it and I think I am so that's all probably. That's pretty awesome, man, to have that yeah. passed down from your father, uh, yeah. whose deck probably has no pathetic cards, by the way. Um, talking about how your series went down, it looked pretty effortless to be able to win very convincingly. Uh, can you talk about the entire journey of being able to qualify for the finals? Was it, was it very easy for you then based off your strategies, or was it very hard, and did you practice a lot? Just talk about that uh, journey and process. Okay. I started playing leather. I really like playing on leather because... You need to play a lot of games, try hard at home with some music, and it's just super good. And then I did the top 25 at Ladder in January. I was like, uh, it will be probably fine. I don't have to play in next month too much, and I will practice on that preliminaries. So I did it, and now I qualified. So that's all. That's awesome, man. What do you think about yeah. the fact that almost every established pro player here has dropped and it's mainly a bunch of unknown dark horses going through the tournament? Uh, do you have any commentary on that from your perspective? Uh, like Hearthstone is about RNG and how you draw it. And of course, if the, uh, the, uh, the, <laughs> the main course of that is the skill about a player which have and but it was probably rng because they are really good and i think it was rng yeah gotcha so you know sometimes it's yeah, good to be able to get lucky in some of the most important scenarios yeah. but i can yeah, understand your point you know it, it's not going to always yeah. be the case and this is the tournament where you guys can shine they can always grab the next season or two yeah. congratulations on your win do you have any final shout outs before we let you go um i Probably not. Like, I'm... Hi, Mom. I like it, man. <laughs> I, you know, I talked yeah. to your opponent yesterday, and he, he actually, I okay. was worried that he had too many shout-outs, and he would eventually hit the entire country that he was representing. But congratulations, and we'll see you next month for the Europe Finals. Yep. All right, guys, that was Pakravach with a lot of words on his thoughts. Uh, but, you know, at the same time, he's only one of eight players that's going to be going to the Winter championships next month uh, really happy to see him go through as well as our next player who might be going through between bunny hopper and nick slay once again another couple of unknown players for now but once we're going to try to put a face to those names very soon stay engaged in the conversation once again hashtag hct will feature those throughout the broadcast as well as tweeting at us at play hearthstone and facebook.com slash hearthstone i'm frodan stay tuned we'll be back right after this